Welcome to the Viper basic training video. Once you have logged into the viper.visionperfect.com website from your web browser with the login credentials provided by Vision Perfect, you can either create a new event or open an existing event. Selecting the create a new event will take you to the event setup form. The event setup form will open with the default stroke play settings which can be changed to any user preferences from the help program default screen where the event setup and scoring defaults are managed. So under help maintenance program defaults you will see the settings for new events. And while you can change the setup for any event, the defaults are intended to closely match the type of events most frequently managed. So from the defaults forms you can change any of the settings for how a new event will appear when you next create a new event. The defaults include the setup parameters and scoring settings for a type of score entry as well as point settings for point games such as Stableford in Chicago. For your new event, you would first give the event a, a name. And note that we support match play, although match play uh, training will be uh, handled in a separate video. So uh, you can select the type of event, whether it's a time starter, a shotgun, a horseshoe shot, or a double shot gun. Set the uh, starting time for the event, set the starting date for the event, uh, set whether it's an 18 hole or a 9 hole event, and whether it's a men's, women, or mixed event, and the team size, as well as the group size. And the group size would change depending on uh, team size selected. So, uh, in addition, you can set the number of rounds up to four rounds, and the total positions for the event can be set. Although the screen is dynamic, and so as you change T selections for the shotgun start that we have selected, you'll note that the number of players is changing as the T boxes change. So we'll still set this for a 36 player event um, using 9 T's at this point. You can also note that uh, if CT's were needed or DT's, the plus and minus options will add additional T's for you to select C or DT's or whatever is needed for an event. If you have uh, multiple courses, you can select the course to be used, or if it is a multi-course event, you can select multiple courses to be used, and uh, the tee box to be used for each course, or multiple tees if uh, you're using mul multiple tees for an event. We're just going to set this to be a, a reverse shotgun uh, on a single course for the sample event. Once you've finished your event settings, just press Finish. Once your event setup parameters are completed and you um, close the setup screen, you will be taken to the player grid where players are managed for the event. And the grid is displayed in two uh, views. The across grid, which uh, gives you the groups on each starting hole or starting time if it happened to be a, a time start. And you can also press the grid icon at the top to change it to a more traditional spreadsheet view, down grid view. Either view uh, will allow you to enter player names, and names can simply be uh, typed into the event. Pressing enter just jumps you down to the next cell so you can continue entering names. Viper also supports a player database, so from the help maintenance players player database maintenance option, you can create a database of members uh, using all the fields available maintain information on those players and then we'll have the ability to add those players to an event. And Viper also uh, integrates fully with the GIN uh, handicap system so once the interface to GIN is set up all of the GIN players for your facility or any other facilities that you choose to add will be added to your database and if you just start typing a few letters of uh, a name, last name or first name, the uh, database players will start to appear, select the player that you want and just press enter and that player will then be added to the event. When you do add players from the database they will be added to the event with the current index in the database and when you have set up the interface with Jin, uh, the interface maintains current handicap indexes uh, at, at the update periods, it just automatically goes out and gets all the updated information. So uh, when you do add players to, the to an event, they will always come in with their current index. And to set up the GIN interface, just simply call Contact Vision Perfect Software Support, and we will turn on the interface with the uh, association and club numbers for your um, club with GIN. Viper also supports importing players from a spreadsheet, an Excel spreadsheet or CSV file. So from the Players menu, you can select Import Players from Excel 
or a CSV file. A, a import utility will open to allow you to choose a file. This will go out to your uh, local machine that you're running your web app browser from, where you can then uh, choose uh, whatever file folder that you need to locate a spreadsheet that has your uh, players for the event in it. Select the spreadsheet and then click import and the uh, utility will open a, a, uh, a program to allow you to define what each column is. So this, in this case first column is first name so you would select first name uh, second column's last name, and the third column, and this is a handicap index, and any of these uh, fields that are in this list can be included in the spreadsheet if you needed to Im import them. Uh, and in this case, the first line does, uh, first row contains headers, so we check the box that the first row contains headers. Once you've uh, defined a layout, you have the ability to save that layout and then retrieve the layout uh, for later use, so you don't have to go through the mapping process, you can actually save that mapping. Once you've got the uh, spreadsheet mapped, you just press OK and it will um, import all of the players. And in this case, since we uh, selected index, it imported them with their current indexes. Once you have players added to an event, there is an option to manage the player name format. So uh, depending on the reports that you may want to print, you can change the format of the names uh, to either upper or lower case or all caps in a first, last, or last, first option. So if I select first, last, and upper and lower case, the uh, Viper will just reformat all of the names um, accordingly. So using this, depending on, like I say, the type of reports that you want to choose, you may want some reports where the last name is first, um, you, c you have the option to change the name format to whatever is required for the reports that you're running. Viper also has full handicap management capabilities for either individual or team uh, events. From the handicaps menu, selecting calculate handicaps, we'll just go out and calculate the full USGA handicap from the tee box that the player is playing from. Also from the handicap menu, there's an option to show the handicap screen where you have the ability to apply, to apply an adjustment for an event, whether you take, are taking a percentage of individual handicaps and applying those handicaps on a by player basis, or if you're developing a team handicap, um, where there's a uh, team hole-by-hole -hole scoring and you just need a single handicap for the team. So uh, it, the handicap utility will allow you to manage any type of a handicap and adjustment, including the ability to set maximum handicap values for men and women and a maximum differential between players in the event. And any handicaps can be rounded to whatever decimal places need, that you need for the event, and that decimal selection will then be reflected on all of the reports uh, for the event. Viper also supports multiple tee boxes from the event for, for events. So if you have some players playing from blue tees, some playing from black tees, whatever, Viper does support that. So in this case, I've uh, selected two tee boxes for this course, silver and copper. And uh, by default, all the players will be assigned to one tee. But to update any players, just click on the tee um, box that you want to change someone to and drop it on the tee box, and it will change that player. Now, you can also drop on the starting tee, which would change all of the players in that tee box to that tee, or if you had uh, team numbers, two twosomes or whatever, you can drop it on the team number, it will change all the players in the team number. So by dragging the tee box down into the grid to either the individual player, to the team, or even to a flight, you can update an entire flight uh, to a different tee box. That's how you change tee boxes. And then, of course, when you calculate handicaps, uh, the handicap utility will be looking at whatever tee box each player is assigned to when making the calculations. Using the same type of drag and drop functionality, if you're running an event on multiple courses, you can also do the same thing by dragging uh, the course name down and dropping it on either a team or a flight uh, or a tee box. And you can uh, update tees uh, by dragging a tee down to a tee box to change players' tee assignments at any time. Viper does support making changes pretty much of any kind to the event. And uh, things like uh, changing the tee box selections, uh, you can simply go back to the event setup screen. And as long as the number of tees don't change, in other words, if I wanted to drop 15B and select 14A instead, as long as I keep the current number of tees selected at 9, I can just make those changes and go back to the grid and they will automatically be updated. So now I've got 14 instead of 15A and B. And if you need to 
add a new tea box to the event then uh, and keep the same existing teas, I can just go back and now select 15B as well, and it's now updated the number of tees to 10 and updated the number of positions to 40, and just returning to the player grid, it will have inserted a new tee box where I can now add players on 15B. When you have extra tees in an, in an event that you don't need and uh, there's no players assigned to those positions, you can use the same process to remove a tee. So going back to the setup screen, simply unchecking the checkbox and going back to the player grid will then remove that position from the grid. So looking at the grid we can now see that the 15B has been removed. Piper also supports any kind of changes to the player setup um, with drag and drop options. So from the across grid um, you can grab any player, drag them anywhere that you want in the event and drop them into that position and it will just drop them into that event that position so it's easily to create pairings that way I mean you can just keep dragging and dropping people to get the pairings set up the way that you want them and um, dragging it doesn't swap it, it just drops so you can drag people back down uh, in, into a group to remake foursomes if necessary so uh, any kind of changes that you need uh, can be accomplished by just dragging and dropping the players to where you want them Adding group is also a way to manage uh, creating fivesomes within foursomes or, or something like that. So if you add a, an additional group, then you can just take any uh, one of the blank positions and drag it up or down, whatever is needed to get the uh, additional position in the group. Then rearrange the uh, players in the group any way that you want, and then you can just add the player. Similarly, if uh, you're building threesomes, you just can leave a position blank, or if someone drops out of the event, you can just highlight the name, delete it, and that will remove that person from the event. And if you don't need the additional positions added, uh, uh, T14 in this example, uh, you can just return to the setup screen and uh, uncheck 14, and it will remove that from the event. Once you have the event set up uh, the way that you want, you are ready to start printing reports for your event. So selecting the reports icon will open the report options screen. From the screen you can do things like uh, check pops on cards if you want to dot the scorecards with the uh, player handicaps. You have up to four descriptors that can be added to the scorecard. There are two user text fields which can be added to reports and if that you want a card sheet note on the bottom of your card sheets there's a field on the report options for card sheet notes. All of the reports with the exception of the scores and payoff reports are uh, designer reports which means you can design them uh, any way that you want and make changes to the existing uh, reports that are installed with your system so from the reports menu when I select a report type such as cart sign the first item in the list is the designer cart reports which will open the report designer to allow you to make your own designs for cart signs but if I select a report you can see how the report works in that uh, there's a properties field to allow you to set the page size and type and whether in this case for card sheets you're printing one up two up or three up and whether you want a header in the report or not in this case we do have a header and we have selected the event name once you check a field to be added to the report then you can drag it and drop it anywhere that you want this just happens to be the header so I can only drag it and drop it within the header but clicking on that field that's been added to the report then opens a properties window for that report where you can set the font size and the font color and whether you want a um, text to be right left or center justified and whether you want a, a background color for the um, field that you've added to the report and uh, so using the same uh, logic the body of the report the main part of the report uh, you can add all of these fields and again when you check a field to be added to the report it'll just drop that field into the report you can then drag it and drop it to position it anywhere that you want clicking on that field then allows you to select the font font size and color and if you decide you don't want it just clicking the trash can will remove that field from the report once a field has been added to a report you can also size that field any way that you need to so grabbing a corner of a field would uh, extend the width and the height uh, grabbing the end of it will just extend the width of it, bottom will just extend the height of it. And uh, you should note that the positioning or the height of the field will determine um, 
the space between player names on a report. So if I preview this report now, um, you can see that the names are very close together. If I increase the space um, for each name and preview it again, you'll see that the names have been pulled apart, further apart. So using that logic, you can uh, increase the space for names on a report. And the last uh, property for reports is graphics. So using uh, the graphics tab, I can select uh, up to four graphics for um, cart sheets. Uh, other reports have uh, many more graphics that can be added to it. But once you uh, select a graphic utility, you will get an import option to allow you to go out and import the graphic from your local machine. And it will just drop it into the report. Once the graphic is on the report, uh, you have the ability to drag and drop it. Um, to position it anywhere on the report, and again, clicking on it will give you the properties for that uh, graphic, or you can change the size of it. Uh, the change graphic option will allow you to go out and uh, select a different graphic to replace that graphic that's been placed on the report, and the trash can would remove the graphic. Once you have uh, set up your report, you can preview it. Preview it also saves the report, so now there are my cart sheets, two up. And um, going, uh, if I close out of the report designer and just go back and go to the reports menu for cart sheets, uh, that report then is added to your menu. So every time you create a new report, it will just automatically get added to the menu. That's how the designer reports work for cart signs, starting reports, uh, and scoreboards, any type of scoreboard for any size paper that you're capable of printing on. The last thing I'll cover in the basic training video is uh, manage, managing your events to delete them, to remove them from your event list, uh, to get rid of old events that you don't need anymore uh, if you close the event, and then cancel the uh, event management wizard for creating a new event or opening an existing event. You can go to the uh, Viper TM menu and select Delete Events where you'll get a list of all of your events. Putting a checkbox in any of the events that you want to delete and pressing the Delete Selected Events will then remove that event from your event list. This concludes the basic training for Viper. Please see any of the many other training videos for other specific operations of the application. Thanks for watching.